You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of September. Indian Air Force inducts its first C-295 transport aircraft. Canadian PM questioned for conspicuous silence on death of Baloch activist. And India shines with gold rush in Asian Games in China. And now for all the details, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Monday formally inducted the C-295 transport aircraft into the Indian Air Force's No. 11 Squadron, Rhino. In a solemn ceremony at the Hindon Air Base, the Defence Minister participated in interfaith prayers held to mark the induction of the aircraft. The medium tactical transport aircraft, which had arrived in India earlier last week, is first of the 16 fly away condition aircraft, which India will receive from aircraft manufacturer Airbus. The remaining 40 aircraft, which are part of the multi billion deal, will be manufactured and assembled in India by Airbus in collaboration with the Tata Group. With the procurement of C-295 aircrafts, India is aiming to replace the aging fleet of Avro 748 planes, which are part of the IAF since 1964. For the Indian Air Force, it's a replacement for the Avro fleet, uh, which uh, uh, is quite old and aging. And from that perspective, uh, the capability that it brings for all the tactical roles that the Air Force undertakes, uh, this aircraft is hugely capable in its class. And it is state of the art in terms of technologies, in terms of avionics. So overall, as an induction into the Indian Air Force, it will really enhance the operational capability. And with eye on assembly elections later this year, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday slammed opposition Congress party, saying that they could potentially revert Madhya Pradesh to Bimaru or ailing state it once was. Addressing party workers of his ruling BJP in Bhopal, PM Modi urged the electorate to choose development over regression likening Congress to rusted iron that cannot fathom the future and lacks the capability to understand national ambition. He asserted that the pole-bound state has held a crucial place in the national vision and also highlighted BJP's two-decade-long rule in the state. Congress <laughs> लेकिन कांग्रेस ने साधन संपन्न मध्य प्रदेश को समर्थ युवाओं वाले मध्य प्रदेश को बीमारू बना दिया दोस्तों बीमारू बना दिया यहां के युवाओं ने कांग्रेस के जमाने की खराब कानून व्यवस्था नहीं देखी यहां के युवाओं ने इस दौर की खस्ता हाल सड़के नहीं देखी यहां के युवाओं ने अंधेरे में जीने को मजबूर गांव और शहर नहीं देखे well, this is the third visit of PM Modi to Madhya Pradesh in the past 45 days, where the ruling party is locked in a close contest with the Congress. BJP has started its campaign early this time, while election dates are expected any time in October. And amid simmering tensions between India and Canada over the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar, the Baloch Human Rights Council of Canada in a letter to PM Justin Trudeau has questioned the lack of action in the alleged murder of Karima Baloch, an exiled human rights activist. Karima Baloch was found dead under mysterious circumstances in Toronto in 2020, where she had been living in exile. She was a vocal critic of the Pakistan's army and its spy agency ISI. The rights group has accused Trudeau of playing politics and ignoring the death of Baloch, claiming that there was a stark contrast with the Canadian government's action on the pro-Khalistan leader. The letter said that Trudeau's conspicuous silence regarding the high-profile, unexplained death of Karima Baloch stands in stark contrast to his impassioned speeches concerning the shooting death of Nijjar. 
And moving on, as Pakistan heads closer to conduct general elections, the country's caretaker, Prime Minister Anwarul Haqqakar, has claimed that free and fair elections can be held without jailed former Premier Imran Khan and his PTI party members. His remarks to the Associated Press came days after the Election Commission announced that polls in the country would be held in January next year. Kakar also stated that thousands of PTI members who were not part of the May 9th violence can participate in the elections. Imran Khan has been barred from politics for five years and has been sentenced to jail in multiple cases. Pakistan is currently being run by a caretaker government that will oversee the general election amid an ongoing economic crisis. Originally, elections were to be held within 90 days of the dissolution of the lower house of parliament in August. And Nepal's Prime Minister Push Kamal Dehel on Monday held bilateral talks with his Chinese counterpart Li Chiang as part of his week-long official visit to Beijing. Dehel informed on microblogging site X that the meeting remained fruitful as they exchanged substantive views on promotion of mutually beneficial cooperation. Early on Saturday, Dehel also called on Chinese President Xi Jinping, which the former said was aimed to advance Nepal-China relations. The meeting comes amid repeated comments by China on Nepal's growing ties with the US and its deep relations with India. New Delhi in particular has invested billions in Nepal in recent years to counter the Chinese influence among its smaller neighbors. Well, India began the gold rush in the ongoing 19th Asian Games as Indian players clinched a gold medal in men's air rifle shooting and women's cricket event on Monday. Shooting trial Divyansh Singh Panwar, Rudrangsh Patil and Ashwari Pratap Singh Thomar secured first position in the men's 10-meter air rifle team shooting event with a score of 1,893.7 with an added bonus of a world record. Thomar also won the bronze medal in the individual men's 10-meter air rifle event. Later in the day, Indian women's cricket team backed the gold for the first time, beating Sri Lanka by 19 runs in the finals. Overall, India has secured 11 medals, including three silver and six bronze, five of which came in rowing alone. Uh, it's not a normal gold medal, it's with that, our world record is also, so it's a lot of fun. So, we're happy to be happy that we've won a gold medal in the team medal, and we've made a new world record in the Asian Games. And as celebrations of Ganesh Chaturthi festival culminate this week, people in India's Chennai city on Sunday bid adieu to the idols of the Hindu god, immersing them in the sea. Take a look. A huge crowd of devotees was witnessed at a beach in India's Chennai city on Sunday as they gathered to culminate the festivities of Ganesh Chaturthi by immersing the idols of Lord Ganesha, the Hindu god of wisdom and prosperity in the sea. The administration has also installed special cranes to move big idols to the seashore. During the festival, people install the idols of Lord Ganesha in their homes and revel in religious pageantry. To mark the culmination, the idols are immersed in water bodies in a ritual called Visarjan, which signifies the divine entities returning to their abodes after being the guest of the devotees. Meanwhile, thousands of devotees have continued to pay obeisance at the famous marquee of Lal Bok Charaja in Mumbai city. The 10-day-long Ganesh Chaturthi is celebrated to mark the birth anniversary of Lord Ganesha. It is majorly celebrated in the western and southern parts of the country. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.